I've done several videos on this channel covering a lot of the basic GNU core utilities, a lot of the shell utilities on Linux, but I realized the other day I haven't covered three of the most basic shell utilities, uh, three of the most useful shell utilities. Those commands are cat, tech, and t. So let me switch over to my desktop and I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal and let me zoom way in, clear that screen there. What I'm going to do is I'm in my home directory. I'm going to make a test directory to play around in. So I'm going to do a mkdir space test. So make directory test. Then let's cd into this new test directory. If I do an ls, of course, it's an empty directory. So let's copy something over. So I'm going to copy over my bash rc from my home directory over into this directory. So let's hit enter on that. Now when I ls, of course, I have the bash rc. The most basic use of cat is simply cat name a file and all it does is it prints the contents of the file to standard output that's all cat does when you give it cat name a file and no other arguments all it does is print the standard output and that's really what most people use cat for but here's the thing although that's a valid use case for cat cat actually stands for concatenate. That's what it was originally meant for. Concatenate means after you've split files up, concatenate means put them back together into one file. And I did a video about the command line tools split and C split. Split takes a file and splits it up. Uh, I, I don't want to cover everything about split and C split, but go check out those videos about those commands. But if I do a split dash L 50 for line count 50 and then dot bash RC, every 50 lines, it's going to split the bash RC. And my bash RC was long enough that it was split into six files, right? And I realized on that video the other day about split and C split, I never told you guys how to put these files back together because I kind of assumed everybody knew about the cat command. It's, it's like the first command you really learned in the terminal. It was one of the first ones anyway. All you do is cat and then the files that you want to put back together, yada, yada, yada. And then at the end, you know, new file dot txt or whatever it is you want to name the file that you're actually creating from all of those split files so what i could do here is that actually i could do cat xa asterisk because all of these six files are actually xa you know a through f so that'll save me on typing and then you need to redirect that right direct that over to whatever file you're writing to in this case i'm going to create a new file i'm going to call it new file.txt and now if I ls, you see, we have new file.txt that was created from all of those splits. And if I cat new file.txt, you will see it is an exact copy of my bash rc. So we took the bash rc, we split it up into six chunks, then we concatenated it all back together into this other file to make that copy. So that is what cat is mainly meant for is printing out a file to read it, you know, print it out to standard output, or you use cat to concatenate split files. Now before going any further, I do think we should talk briefly about what redirection is, especially IO, we should talk about standard input, standard output, and standard error. So when we talk about standard in, uh, it's typically uh, symbolized with the number zero, standard out is one, and standard error is two. And for those of you that are not sure what that is, standard input is what I'm entering at the command line. So, you know, when I do an ls, for example, that's the input and that's the output, right? That's the standard output, right? So that's the input and that's the output. And if I did something that didn't make sense, like a give it a, a Z flag, which in my case, my LS doesn't have a Z flag because my LS is really the EXA command, which doesn't recognize that flag. And this is standard error, which is also output, but we have two different forms of output. If the output is normal output, it's just standard output. But if it's an error, it's standard error. I hope that makes sense. So you have standard input, standard output, standard error. And just like everything else on a Unix-like system, Everything's a file, right? Including standard input, standard output, and standard error. So actually, slash dev slash stdin is standard input, slash dev slash std out is standard out, and then slash dev slash stderr is standard error. Those are where those files are on your system. Now I bring all of this up because cat name a file, for example, cat.bashrc, you know, I could run that, but what is that? Well, what it is is it's taking 
standard input and the input it's taking is dot bash rc the contents of the dot bash rc and then of course it's writing it to standard output and that's what the cat command is doing but it has saved you on some of the typing because technically what what it did is zero and then the less than sign right so that is hey what are we doing well we're taking standard input what are we taking as standard input the dot bash rc so if i hit enter on that it's the same command it's just you didn't have to type uh, zero less than sign because it knows the way the cat command was written that if it's cat file name that is the input but that's technically what you're doing and of course you could do output and if you wanted to you could specify standard out but you don't have to do any of that because that command really you don't need standard output if it's just going to standard output it always goes to standard output by default and you don't need to specify the input if you're just doing cat file name either so uh, i just wanted to clear some of that up now why did i bring that up is because sometimes you don't necessarily want the output to go to standard output right sometimes you want to cat the, the dot bash rc and then write it to a new file for example right you see the redirection now so instead of by default if i didn't give it a specific place to write it to it's going to write it to standard out but in this case it doesn't write it to standard output right it writes it to new file.txt and what the single greater than sign here does is it takes the new file.txt whatever was there before it gets overwritten the bash rc is and it's, this is an exact copy of the bash rc now now if you wanted to append something to a file instead of completely over writing it you do two greater than signs so now if i do cat dot bash rc and then two greater thans new file dot txt let me hit enter if i cat that well let's not even cat it i'm going to open that in vim just to make reading it a little easier i've actually now if i scroll down we get to the end of my bash rc which should be right here and then we get the beginning of another bash rc because we added it twice and it didn't override it right it, it just appended it but if i want to completely override it you know i could do something like uh, echo one into new file.txt and now when i cat new file.txt it's simply one right well we completely overwrote the thousand lines that were there before with just that single character so be careful when you're doing the redirection remember single greater than is overriding the entire file and then the two greater than signs is appending the already existing file meaning you're adding to the end of it and of course sometimes you don't want to write to standard output sometimes you want to write to standard error or sometimes you want to suppress error messages for example if i did that ls-z command earlier you know we get this printed to standard error right well you know if i really didn't want to see that error message i could do uh, two greater than sign for standard error and i want to direct all of the messages that normally would get printed to standard error i want to direct those to slash dev slash null which is a file on your system think of it as a black hole it's where things go to die right you don't ever have to see it so if i hit enter it ran that command and that command had an error but we didn't have to see it because we sent standard error to slash dev slash null now this here the two greater than and then slash dev slash null you will see that a lot in scripts you will see people use it a lot interactively at the command line because sometimes you're testing things out sometimes you know they're going to give you an error sometimes those error messages are long you don't want to see them and, and that's a way to suppress that error message now enough about redirection and standard in out and error but i needed to explain that because that's really important with the cat command now back to some of the flags you can use with cat cat dash in name of file adds line numbers which is really useful uh, some other flags you could use really cat most people never use a flag with it the only flag that i've ever used with cat is actually that dash in flag for the numbers because I'm, sometimes you do find it useful but if you do uh, the man page for cat it has some other things for example dash capital e is interesting if i run that you will see it adds a dollar sign at the end of every single line in the file why is that important if you're doing pattern matching based on uh, regular expressions and you need that dollar sign actually printed at the end of the line for something for your pattern matching in your script that could be useful there is actually something similar for tabs if cat dash t but i don't use tabs i actually have vim and emacs uh, configured to where they actually don't tab <laughs> they replace tabs with spaces but what that would do is if there were any tabs in here you would see a uh, caret symbol capital i 
in their place. Let me see if I can actually find a, uh, a file that actually has that. So if I go, let's go into slash etsy slash sudo dot conf. So this is a system file, so I didn't write it. So let's see if I can find, yeah, there's a tab, right? Somebody tabbed right there. So that is the dash T flag, but again, I don't typically use those, but if you do a man cat, there is a few flags and options for cat. Not that many. Now, let me clear the screen. Let's talk about tack. So what is tack? Well, if you take cat and reverse it, you get tack. <laughs> That's kind of what the command is. If I do a tack on the uh, dot bash RC here, it prints it to standard output just like cat does, but it does it in reverse order so all the lines are reversed so this was the first line of my bash rc it's now the last line in the output this was the second line now it's actually second to last so it just prints it all out in reverse order and that's kind of really all tack is that useful for it's because so many people needed a way to catafile to print something out in reverse order we needed a specific command for that because without the tech command you know you would have to create your own bash functions essentially to make cat print out things in the reverse order and because enough people needed that it became its own command now if i do a man on tech you will see tech it concatenates and prints files in reverse so it does exactly what cat does in reverse so it prints things in reverse to standard output it also concatenates things in reverse so if i do a tack well let me ls to verify that those files are still there remember the split files now what if i do tack x a and then the asterisk because i'm going to tack all six files right to new file dot txt and I'll, I'll just overwrite the file now what did that do well let's cat <laughs> new file.txt to see exactly what that did well it put the split files it put them all back together but it did it in a very strange way if you didn't if i didn't explain what it did it wouldn't be that obvious but what it does is it takes those six files so the very first file xaa was line one through fifty tech took it in reverse you know 50 down to 1 and then the next file xab it did the same thing line 50 is first down to 1 and it put the so it puts the files together in order from xaa xab xac but the individual files are reversed so that may not be you know what you were expecting with that command but that is exactly what a, a concatenation with tack does oh, let me clear the screen now let's talk about t what is the t command t e e well the t command is used when you need to cat something and meaning i want you to print the standard output but i also want you to write that to a file because by default you know, of course you know cat can't do that right cat if I cat, you know, the dot bash RC and write it to new file dot TXT, right? It writes the bash RC to the new file, right? But it doesn't actually print it to standard output. And how you achieve this is using T, but be careful with how you use T because T is not like cat. You're not going to T and then, you know, like name a file or something, because if you do that, all you're going to do is you're going to just blow away that file. You're going to empty the file. It's just going to become zero bytes because the way the T command is actually designed to work, you're supposed to run some command and then pipe it into T and then, you know, name a file. So let's try this. I'm going to go ahead and let's just do an echo. And how about I echo hello world and we're going to echo that. I didn't want to pipe that into XORGs. I wanted to pipe that into T and we'll do this into newfile.txt and you see what it does is newfile.txt now actually reads hello world but we also got it outputted right to standard output now notice we're not doing this with a single greater than sign or the two greater than signs if we want to append something so what if we want to append something instead of overwriting the whole file with t well t has a flag for it so if you don't want to overwrite the whole file you just tack on the uh, dash a flag and then let me do this here so it's obvious what we just did line two i'm going to echo line two into t dash a for a pinned new file dot txt and it echoed line two if i do a cat on new file dot txt there's actually two lines right hello world's first line and then line two but it only catted out or outputted here the t command what we were appending in that case 
So T is pretty neat. You know, I could do something like I could take ls and then I could pipe it into T, you know, new file dot txt. And there is the output from ls. And that output was written, of course, to new file dot txt. So there's the cat of that. And that's cool. It, it even kept the uh, escape sequences and the coloring and everything as well. So kind of like tack was needed, even though you could technically make cat do things in reverse, you know, if you pipe things into other shell commands. Is T really needed? Well, I mean, I could accomplish what I did with that ls command. Could I do that with just using cat? I'd have to probably use a couple of commands. What I'd have to do is I would have to ls and then I'd have to write that to the new file. So that takes care of the writing part, but how do we get the standard output part? Well, I'd have to and and, meaning run another command and then cat you know, new file.txt. And that would essentially be the same thing as that command there. But again, you're running two commands where in this case, of course, we're just piping ls into t. Now, t is interesting because I don't use it that often, but there are a couple of use cases that I find really valuable for t because you're going to run into some issues occasionally where you have to use t. One of the most obvious examples, those of you that use vim, and when I talk about vim, I mean proper vim, not NeoVim. So I'm actually going to do command vim here because my vim is alias to NeoVim. I want to run the actual vim, you know, the standard vim command, because this only works in standard vim, not NeoVim. But if I open something that requires root privileges, sudo privileges, so I'm going to open this particular file here. It could be any file, but that just happened to be one that was in the history. So I'm going to edit this first line. I'm, I'm going to add a second uh, pound symbol, you know, hashtag there at the top. And if I hit escape and do a colon W for right here in Vim, it's going to complain. Hey, you didn't open that as root. You didn't open that with sudo. So you have no privileges to write to this file. Well, how do you get around that? Well, in standard Vim, how you get around this is you get into command mode. So what you do, you do the colon and then w for write and then do exclamation sudo t so you're going to use the t command with sudo privileges and then space and then the percent sign what this is going to do is use the t command to actually write to the file well it's going to use the t command with sudo privileges to write to the file if i hit enter it's going to open a terminal in a split it's going to ask for my root password i guess i could give it my password and it hit enter and wrong password all right, and that was the right password. And now, yeah, I can just hit L for load the file. And now we're good. Now I could quit out of that. And if I come back to it, you will see my changes were actually taken. So if you're a Vim user, you are going to use the T command. I'm, I'm just going to tell you now. Another thing you're going to find is sometimes you're trying to do things with redirection, redirection once again, where you're trying to take a command, the output of a command, and redirect it into a file, but that file is protected. For example, I did a video uh, not too long ago on uh, how to shut down and reboot on Linux. And one of the things was using the magic sysrq key, right? And there's a file on your system. If I cat uh, slash proc slash sys slash kernel slash sysrq, I'm going to cat that command. This is the uh, privileges I currently have with that particular key, the sysrq key. Now, what if I wanted to change that? Well, I could change those to instead of 16, I could change it to one, right? And then uh, I could put that in slash proc sys. Yeah kernel sysrq and already I know the command is not going to work. I'm in the fish shell by the way and you see the red it's letting me know the command you're trying to type it's not going to work. I'm going to hit enter anyway. But the reason it's not going to work is because it already knew I don't have permission. I don't have permission to echo something into this. Well let me up arrow and you know if you don't have permissions for something what do you do? Well sudo right sudo echo one and then direct that into uh, sysrq actually because i'm overriding the file i really don't need the double greater than i just need the single one but that is an error too now what do you do well now you have to really think about things because the problem here is you just gave echo sudo privileges you don't need sudo privileges to echo right but on the other side of the redirection you didn't give yourself sudo privileges for this. So how do you get around this problem? I'm going to tell you now, anytime you encounter this problem with any protected file, 
T is your lifesaver. So what you want to do, take away the sudo privileges from Echo. Echo doesn't need that. And then Echo 1, what you want to do is pipe that into sudo T. So you're going to give T elevated privileges to write to proc sys kernel sysrq. If I do that, now it has changed that file. I'm going to go back and set that though to the uh, settings as before. I'll change it back to 16. So that's just a little trick that you can do with T. I found those two tricks very useful, especially the Vim one. And of course, you know, I showed you a little bit of what you can do with both cat and tech. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. I need to thank Devin, Gabe, James, Matt, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Alan, Armor Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Diokai, Dylan, George, Lee, Lenny, Ninja, Maxim, Mike, Erion, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedor, Polytech, Red Prophet, Stephen, Willie, Red Prophet. I don't know what I said, but I don't think I pronounced it right. Red Prophet, Stephen and Willie. All right, these guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. And all of these ladies and gentlemen as well, all these names you're seeing on this screen right now, each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, they're awesome because without them, I couldn't do what I do. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, please check out DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.